I'm now going to take you through the general mechanism for nucleophilic addition on aldehydes and ketones. Aldehydes and ketones both contain the carbonyl group, which by nature is polar because of the electronegativity of the oxygen being different to that of the carbon. Thus, electron density within this bond is drawn towards the oxygen, rendering it slightly negative. The carbon, therefore, gets a slightly positive charge. And for now, we're just going to ignore any groups that are attached to the carbon, and I'm just going to refer to those as the rest of the molecule one and the rest of the molecule two. This carbon now is highly susceptible to attack by common nucleophiles. So if we regard a nucleophile as a species with a lone pair of electrons, which is attracted to an electron deficient carbon, what can now happen is the nucleophile can donate its pair of electrons to that electron deficient carbon. We'll show that as where the arrow starts, there's the pair of electrons to where the electrons are going to, that's that carbon. Now here we can see we would have potentially one, two, three, four, five bonds, and therefore something's got to give because we know carbon can only have four bonds. The weakest bond will therefore break, so it has to be one of these pair of electrons on the carbonyl group. It would be likely to be the pi bond, which is the weaker bond, and those pair of electrons will therefore move onto the more electronegative oxygen. Again, notice that the electrons can only flow in one direction. What results from that is an intermediate which has four bonds. The carbon oxygen now has a single bond. There's the rest of the molecule. With the nucleophile, new bond made, which I'm going to represent with a green arrow here, and there is the nucleophile now attached. Now before, you can see that the oxygen has got no charge, however now a pair of electrons has transferred onto the oxygen, so we represent that with a lone pair of electrons, and it now has a negative charge. This either means to retain stability of charge on both sides, that there must have either been an overall negatively charged charge here, in which the nucleophile must have been negatively charged, and we'll look at an example later on where we have a neutral nucleophile. So examples of nucleophiles which are negatively charged are hydroxide ions, cyanide ions, and hydride ions all having lone pairs of electrons which they can donate to the central carbon atom. So let's recap. The nucleophile comes in, donates a pair of electrons to the electron deficient carbon, pi bond breaks, electrons then move onto the oxygen, electrons will always flow in the same direction. The resulting intermediate has a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen with a negative charge and the nucleophile is attached, forming four bonds. So as a result, the attacking species is a nucleophile, so it's nucleophilic, and a double bond has been broken and something else is added on, so therefore it's a nucleophilic addition reaction mechanism.